Hi guys, I'm Daniel and today I'm going to show you one of the most beautiful yet underrated capital cities of Europe, Budapest. I know, I might be biased because I was born and raised here. In this video, I'm going to show you why I believe Budapest should be on your bucket list and also a little bit of history. Let's do this. So I am in the Castle Garden Bazaar and before we go up to the castle, let's talk about history. We believe our ancestors were nomadic warriors and you probably heard about Attila the Hun, right? Some people think that the Huns and the Hungarians are related and this is probably why our country called Hungary in many languages. According to the legend, our ancestors were organized in seven tribes. Each tribe had its own leader. They wanted to settle down in a defendable land, so with the lead of Arpad, the head of the tribes, the Hungarian landtaking began, and they arrived here to the Carpathian Basin. Did you know that Hungary was a kingdom until 1946, with many kings from the Austrian Habsburg family? The Buda castle was the main residence of the Hungarian royals. The castle and palace complex lays on a Buddha hills overlooking the Danube and it's called either the Royal Palace or the Royal Castle and now it is a World Heritage Site. This district is filled with medieval, baroque and 19th century buildings and home of many museums. The main building houses the History Museum, the National Gallery and the National Seiching Library. You will also find here the Sándor Palace which is the office of the President of Hungary, and it is also serves as his official residence. The original royal residence has a really troubled history. It was destroyed and rebuilt many times over. In the Middle Ages, because of the rise of the Ottoman Empire, Ottomans were a threat to Christian Europe. Most of the Hungarian castles, including the Buda castle, were strengthened and new bastions were added. The Buda side castle wall was protected by the Fisherman's Guild and this is the reason why we call this part the Fisherman's Bastion. This building was restored and has seven towers which represent the seven leaders of the Hungarian landtaking. Despite all the effort, in 1541, Ottomans captured the Buddha castle and this church, the Matthias Church, in the heart of the castle district, became the city's main mosque. The legend has it then the Nuremberg ritual commemorates the victory against the Ottomans at the siege of Belgrade, which was part of Hungary back then. The Pope ordered the bells of every European church to be rung every day at noon as call for the believers to pray for the defenders. Buda and Pest were two separate cities for centuries. They only merged in 1873. That bridge is the Chain Bridge. It was the first permanent bridge across the Danube, and now it is the symbol of the Budapest skyline. Another landmark on the bank is the Parliament Building, which houses the seat of the National Assembly of Hungary. To celebrate the 1000th birthday of the country, many huge constructions began like this. Saint Stephen was our first king and the first one who got Christian. His crown, the Holy Crown, can be found here, in the Central Hall. But fun fact, during the war it was even kept in Fort Knox for safekeeping. Did you know that this crown is older than the crown of the United Kingdom? The ring was created in the 1070s and made of gold and decorated with 19 pictures as well as semi-precious stones and pearls. A few steps from here is the St. Stephen Basilica. It's not just a Christian church, but you will also find here the mummified right hand of our first king. I know, it's a bit strange. You can also climb up to the basilica, where you will have a magnificent view over the city. Okay, I'm starving, so let's head to the old Jewish district. The Dag Square is the center of the city and nightlife. The close by area was the old Jewish district. Its streets now packed with pubs and restaurants and filled with people day and night. 
The close by Dohain Street synagogue was built before the First World War in a Moorish revival style. It is the largest synagogue in Europe and the second largest in the world. But before we continue our day trip, we need to talk about the effect of the First and the Second World Wars. In 1914, with the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, the hero of the throne of Austria-Hungary, the First World War broke out. The peace agreement, the Treaty of Trianon, formally ended the First World War and the Kingdom of Hungary lost 71% of its land, which was given to Romania and the former Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. We were crushed and the revision of Trianon rose to the top of Hungary's political agenda. We wanted to restore the greater country, so did Germany. The worldwide Great Depression did not help either nation, and because the drop of the standard of living, the negative political mood of the countries shifted towards the right. The Germans, led by Adolf Hitler, wanted to restore the German Empire, and the territorial revisionism appealed to the Hungarian desires. In 1942, Hungary entered the Second World War on the German side and nationalist ideas raised. Jewish districts like this one offered protection to Jews, but during the war a large ghetto was created here. Nearly half a million Hungarian Jews were the victim of the Holocaust. Every leaf of the weeping willow in the garden of the synagogue lists a name of a victim. If you are planning to discover Budapest, download my free travel guide from the link below. I listed the most important sites in it, with several maps, useful tips and also the most delicious Hungarian dishes you need to try. Walking north on the streets of the Jewish district, you will end up on the Andrashi street, inspired by the Parisian Champs-Élysées. It's not only a World Heritage site, but also one of Budapest's main shopping streets with fine cafes, restaurants and luxury boutiques. Here you will find the State Opera House. Its rich interior, red and gold colors, provide a breathtaking experience and the acoustic here, considered among the world's finest. This building on the Andrashi Street is the House of Terror. Sadly, the bad times under the Germans were replaced by the bad times under the Russians when in 1945 Soviets launched a strategic offensive and later the military occupation ensued. This building was the headquarter of both the Nazis and the communist secret police. This museum makes it clear why the uniforms had changed, the terror did not. Let's hop on the Metro Line 1 and head to another landmark of the city, the Hero Square. It was part of the Millennia Constructions and it is the oldest underground railway system in continental Europe, only predated by the London Underground. The central feature of the Hero Square is the Millennia Monument, which reminds us to the Hungarian conquest to the Carpathian Basin. In the center of the square you will find a group of seven figures, representing our seven leaders. On the column you will see the statue of Archangel Gabriel. In his right hand he holds the Holy Crown of Saint Stephen. The Vajdonyet Castle in the city park was also built as part of the Millennium Exhibition. It was designed to feature copies of several landmark buildings from different parts of the Kingdom of Hungary, especially the Hunyad Castle in Transylvania. The building stands on an artificial island and the surrounding lake serves as an open-air ice skating ring in winter. Did you know that the largest medical bath in Europe is in Budapest? The Széchenyi Thalmar bath has many indoor and outdoor pools, open all year round and hosts several pool parties at night. Budapest has so much more to offer, just check out my travel guide. I make videos like this one about my adventures all around the world, so if you have free time, watch these. Or hit the subscribe button below and you won't miss a thing. See you soon.